and it's about uh, the GTA of our kernel project. So it's about the Linux kernel for some specific hardware that many or some some or many of us have and own. So let me start with the goals we have, what we want to achieve. The first thing is that we need a modern and up-to-date, up-to-date means maintained, tested and optimized production kernel for these devices. There are of course kernels that work, but the latest one that works really well is the 3.7. There is a 3.12 kernel that works good, but I think Linus will publish in two weeks, he will publish 3.18 and start with 3.19. So you see the big gap between 3.7 to 3.19, and that is what this project is about to close this gap, so that in the long run we have this modern and up-to-date kernel for these devices. The kernel should also be ready for daily use, which means that it is feature complete. It supports all features of the hardware, that it is tested, that it is robust. And it should run on all device variants, which is the GTA 04, which is this one. There's also a different variant, which is this device, which is more a PDA handheld you with a bigger screen and a really big battery. So the kernel should be the same. <laughs> I already mentioned the Neo 900 project. There the kernel should also be the same. It should run there. And there's a project with Pyra handheld or Pyra, which is a gaming uh, device similar or the successor of the Open Pandora, which may also be known. And why should all these projects develop their own kernel? They shouldn't. The kernel is the kernel. It should support different hardware, of course, but the kernel is the same. The problem of making it ready for daily use, maintaining it, is almost the same. There are some variants, and during the workshop we will uh, also address what these variants between these different hardware is and what the Linux way is of taking care of that. I already mentioned it should support the available hardware by 100%, which means that it also should support the camera, the 3G modem, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, battery, charging, headset check, whatever is in such a device. Yeah, why do not do, don't we use simply what Linus is making in the Linux project? We can download the latest kernel, but it works. That's the first good news. It works. <coughs> but it does not yet support our devices completely. So it is only about 70 to 80 percent which is supported. They then uh, problem is they make uh, might change things in the kernel because they don't know our device. They remove drivers, for example, because if we are not included in the kernel.org system, they do not know that we use this driver. And at some time, the last project that was included has changed it, or the project is too old, and then they say, oh, nobody is using this driver, we remove it. So if we use this kernel, but do not do something for that, which is called upstreaming, then we cannot expect that the kernel.org project is supporting our hardware. The third point is that there is no kernel configuration. If you ever have compiled a Linux kernel yourself. There's a lot of configuration options, which <coughs> file systems are included, uh, how the boot log is looking like, and some optimizations, and so on. And the Linux system uh, comes with some standard configuration, which is not the right thing we need 
for a production car or where you want to put in SD cards with several file systems on it. So everything should be uh, properly configured. There's a third proposal that we always, uh, that we sometimes are asked, why not just pick some kernel like the 3.7 or 3.12 and optimize that until it works. There are several issues with doing that, like by, by taking just a stable release and then improve on it. The Linux system, uh, Linux system, it regularly introduces good features, new features that uh, are of interest for such a device. For example, if they improve the whole power management system, then we benefit from that. If we do not, or if we have cho chosen a, an older stable release, we either have to re-implement that ourselves, or we stick at the older solutions. So we would lag behind the uh, technology development and improvements of the Linux kernel. The same is not only for power management, it's for security fixes. Another aspect is that uh, with every release of Linux, there are new internal APIs of the kernel. And because uh, the, the people at Linux, they try to improve the structure permanently, these APIs become better and better. Sometimes they are worse, but in, in most cases, they are better than before. And these APIs make it easier for us to implement the specific drivers for such a device. For example, for the camera with the 3.7 kernel, we were not able to make it run at all because they had been three different camera subsystems and none of that was, was compatible with the processor and the camera we had chosen. In 3.12, it worked. There was uh, were only two left, I think, and maybe in 3.19 or 3.20, there will be just one standard camera interface and we just have to configure it. So it is better to follow these improvements and especially for areas that we can't improve ourselves. For example, they optimize caching or file systems and so on. So if we want to participate with that, we should follow what is going on on the main line, on the mainstream. The final thing is that there is no stable release that supports these devices with a device tree. I will later explain what the device tree is well enough. So with 3.12, it is basically the last kernel that we could use currently as this stable basis. And the last practical thing, and that's what Marek will uh, demonstrate, if we want to get things upstream, which means into the official Linux, they must be based on their latest development. So if we develop and optimize some stable release, it takes half a year or one year, and at that time it's so old that they never will accept it. Or it is more difficult to bring our changes in afterwards than, uh, uh, than if we would use it or do it the way we do it. Yeah, the way we do it is that we have an almost feature complete distribution kernel for daily use, but we rebase or merge in regularly the latest uh, <coughs> use kernels. For example, currently we have the 3.18 RC6, release candidate number six. Probably tomorrow night, Linus will publish RC7, and on Monday we just merge in things. Sometimes there's a merge conflict, we fix that, and then from Monday on we have the 3.18 RC7 version. It has not lost any features, unless there are bugs. <coughs> and it should also be ready for daily use. Of course, we carry along a lot of a set of patches that add functions that are still missing in the kernel.org system. 
And that is what Marek will tell. We work on getting these differences upstream. And if we have finally done that, they will be maintained automatically. For example, what happens is that the Linus curl tree is rearranged. They decide, oh well, there's one subdirectory in the kernel tree is so crowded with many drivers, then somebody makes a restructuring and it gets better groups and so on. If our own extensions drivers are included in that, then they will simply rename that file as well. We don't have to care about it. We will just merge in the next release and this renaming is done also for our part. So this automatically maintaining by, by the full Linux uh, community is something which is really interesting because there are so many developers. Yeah. Finally, we have a small issue tracker which helps us to guide uh, what is still missing, what should be done so that it fulfills the original aim that it is uh, indeed usable. So in a graphics, the information flow is yeah, new features, new ideas, new, new file systems, new power management systems, and so on, come into kernel.org. That's outside our world. Every Monday, we merge it into our GTA04 kernel. Then we test it, we fix it, we develop it. Sometimes we have own ideas. For example, somebody could look how to implement the infrared we have in this hardware. Then it goes into this kernel. This is tested and ready for daily use. And then we also push it upstream. And we try to reduce this gap. And reducing this gap also is an indication where we need to do something. To help with this, we have a statistics tool which can find out how far we are away from the official Linux. And you can see the 3.12.0, we had 58 files with differences. Then, uh, it could, uh, did go down a little, then 3.14, we did have a lot of more differences. Now you may ask, oh, what happened there? We, Nicolaus just told that we want to reduce the gap. <laughs> well, at that moment, we had introduced or switched to this device tree uh, method, and device tree is a different way uh, introduced or, or made mandatory in 3.14 uh, to define what the real hardware has as features. For example, this hardware has a as a display of this size and dimensions and a specific display controller inside. This one has a different display and somehow if we want to have the same kernel, we must specify is it a hardware with this display or this one. And that is what the device tree is about. So we have added this to be able to participate in this 3.14 and later. Then in 3.16, it goes down because we already had been able to push some parts of our differences to, to, to kernel.org and we have rearranged some things using the newer drivers that became available in the 3.16. So work continued. Here in this it did go up again because we added the Pyra handheld prototype uh, Michael will come this afternoon and tell what it is. So this was added and there was a lot of additions. There's new hardware that is not yet inside here. So there's new hardware that needs new drivers, there's a new device tree file. In fact, there are five different ones for, for, for small variations. So in, in such a phase it increases. And then from 3.17 to 3.18, first release candidate, it did go down again. Well, just one file, that's not much, but 
it shows that there was a patch that was accepted exactly in the way we did have it. So we have no difference left over. Okay, here is all those some small increase, mainly because I have added old, a very old piece of hardware. This is the legal board XM. This one, this was one of the first prototypes of the uh, GTA 04 video board and uh, a display attached to that and I could make this 3.18 kernel work on this piece of hardware again. So this device tree work and doing that, uh, this rolling uh, development of kernels is really uh, helpful. Would it work on legal board? Not the exactly. standard is as well. As well. Okay. It needs a different device stream, and I have not yet finished that. But it sh there's no reason that it should not work. There is uh, the standard Linux runs on the Beagle board, for example, C or C2 or C4 version runs. And what it needs is the adaptation for this uh, special display. <coughs> I think you have one of these. Yes, yes, yeah. I have a legal board and it's just uh, mm -hmm. gaining dust. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's an interesting board. Yeah, it's, 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 it's <laughs> it. I yeah. had to buy a, uh, on eBay a new legal board XM because my <laughs> one was broken when I tried to, to do this. <clears throat> Anyways, this is the status of this week. And the target is, of course, that at some time in the future, I don't know yet the, the version number, the release candidate is away from Linus version of the same by zero files. <laughs> so that is the goal. And well, to reach this goal, we have to do still have to do a lot of things. Um, can you read that? Or is it okay? Okay, it's a readable. Female is better than I had expected. <laughs> so this is also what the statistic tools can show. No, no, there's no arrow. Or does somebody have a pointer, laser pointer? No? No. OK. Let's do it that way. Um, it groups the different files. The statistics before was a summary. It just said that there are 130 different files. <laughs> But this shows which files are different. And they are grouped. For example, the first file here is a configuration file. That is a specific configuration I mentioned for our before that our device needs more than the standard configuration. But that is a difference that will not manage. So in fact, this target of zero differences is a little unrealistic. There will be at least one. <laughs> Then here, these are miscellaneous drivers, for example, here some clock modifications, here XCON GPIO, or different chips have small, or smaller or larger modifications. For example, here is just one line difference or ten lines. So these are things that should be easier to get upstream. Well, of course, getting things upstream means that somebody must look at it, be able to exactly describe it, and then argue with the maintainers who are the quality gate of the official Linux uh, to accept. <coughs> Here, for example, touchscreen TSC 2007, that's a touchscreen driver, and we have added, made some additions to, to the original driver so that it already, that it uh, is able to handle differently oriented uh, touch screens. And for that I should mention there are 103 differences, but this has already been accepted and will appear in 3.19 RC1. So in three or four weeks, this will go down. Yeah. Here is also an area where which upstreaming is very difficult. That is the GPU driver. Here in our kernel tree, we have uh, for the 3D 
graphics of this uh, processor. We have a drive on, but it, the last time it did work was on the 3.8 kernel, but it's very difficult to get that working on, on newer kernels. So that's a, on one side. We, we are not really able to make it work, and the other one is even if we were able, we are not really the authors of this package, and it's a very big package, and it's very unlikely that we can manage to get this upstream. Some others, there again is something which will appear in 3.19. Others we have submitted, but they are still under discussion, which means we submitted to the Linux kernel mailing list, and then the maintainers say, oh no, that's not what we want to see. Then we argue, and it can happen, and for one of these it did happen, that we argue, but we never get an answer. <laughs> so they just reject it with our reasoning, and that's now well, can happen. It's not the best situation, because we simply do not know what we should do now. Yeah, here are some others which are plain extensions. We have our, <coughs> our own scripts and tools that we maintain within our uh, kernel tree because changes in the kernel tree mean that we have to update things here. For example, there are UDEV rules for controlling the charger. Or there is a tool hardware test which tries to blink all LEDs and, and so on. This is not kernel related, so it cannot be upstreamed. So Linux kernel does not, or Linux does not want to see this ever in his kernel. But it needs to be synchronized with the kernel development. And the last block here is the device trees. And for the device trees, there we have a lot of device trees, for example, for, for this device. And as far as I know, this one has not yet been submitted. But we will do it at some point. So we have more device tree files because we support more devices than currently are in the official Linux. So to summarize the status, because I said, well, the best kernel was the 3.7, the second best is the 3.12, and this is the third best. Uh, let me go through the list. We can boot with device stream that works on all variants. The device tree is almost complete. There are just some small pieces missing, or should be fixed, or reformatted, for example. Display works and is already accepted. The backlight currently has only on and off, so there's no smooth backlight control. The TV out for the GTA04 is always working, almost working, and Marek is just in the final stage of submitting it. There is already a lot of discussion with the maintainer, and I think with the last proposals he did make, it should be accepted. Battery charging works, USB and OTG <coughs> works, the fuel gauge driver, which looks into the battery, how full it is, also works, and it is almost upstream. There's one minor piece that is not, not yet in. The touchscreen driver I had mentioned is accepted. Uh, there is one feature in our older cars that is not yet reintegrated, that is a, a <coughs> tittering algorithm in the kernel driver. Then for GPS, that also works now, but it's unclear how it can be accepted by, by, by the kernel. There's one issue I uh, called virtual GPIO, and that is rejected. So it works perfectly, but is not in a status that the Linus gatekeepers will accept it. There's a different solution by Neil Brown that also works, of course, <laughs> but it's also unclear if that one will be accepted. So we need more discussion on that. 
Wi-Fi partially works. The power management of the Wi-Fi is still not exactly clear. And here also Neil has submitted something unrelated to our work. But let's see what, what the better solution will finally be. And for the modem, we need power control. We need to turn it on and off and check if it is really turned off. That works almost. But like GPS and Wi-Fi, it is also unclear what will be acceptable. So this is, I would say, the, the largest construction site we have is how to we have the functions, but how do we get them into the cow so that we come finally come into that mode that there's no difference to the cow.org tree. Camera is not yet supported by the device tree. I think in 3.19 they might uh, introduce some additions so that it could become possible to enable the camera. The same, well, for, not, not the same, but a different thing is for the sound, the FM radio, the headset check detection. That is not working or not working well on the GTA 04. On other devices like the Beagle board, the Panda board, or the Pyra handheld, which use the standard drivers from Linux.org, it works perfectly. But here on the GTA 04, we do not have the standard hardware, so we have small modifications, and these make problems. So, if you ask me, what do we need to make this again a daily use phone? Well, I must say, for a daily use phone, we need this and this. So, that's the main reason why the 3.7 and 3.12 cows are still better to be used. Well, there are some minor features in the hardware, infrared, there's a flash or torch driver for an optional LED, but that is not in the device tree. And I already mentioned for the 3D graphics that won't be accepted even if we submit. So that's an overview of the status of the co work. Then about the device trees, which are separate files that tell the co what the hardware exactly is and how chips communicate and are connected together. We have it and works for the GTA 04. It works for the for this one. There's a variant with an even a larger display that works as well. For the Neo 900, the, the hardware is not uh, developed far enough to test something, but the differences are mainly the uh, display panel driver and some GPIOs are switched and, and some other minor things. So developing the device tree for the Neo 900 hardware, let me say, it can be done in several hours. It's not a, a big task to make it. Now for the BeagleBot, it's not tested, but XM works with this uh, LCD cape. For the BeagleBot Black, I have started, but that's still incomplete. On the Panda board, ES it works, and the OMAP 5 evaluation board, the Pyro prototype, it works as well. And maybe we have ideas for others to come. Yeah, before I hand over to Marek, some issues in the project, some general issues. Well, the distributions and the owners are a little, at least in my perception, reluctant to use or support this kernel. All the config options are at least to have it as a configuration option so that the distribution can say, uh, User, if you want to try this kernel, then do it this way. If you want to have a stable kernel, a 3.7 or a 3.12, then do it that way. Having this is very important because we would have more users and bug reports. Yeah, 
I already mentioned uh, that upstreaming is sometimes very easy. You just submit it. When within a week nobody says no and the maintainer says then it must be good, accept it. That happened for the touchscreen driver. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes argumentation is really tough and Generally, of course, it's a matter of workforce in, in our project because the discussion needs to be, go into details. It sometimes needs more analysis. It needs to rework it. It needs to do tests. What is a better solution to convince the maintainer? And that is that can be really tough work. And finally, nobody knows everything. For example, in, in the team that is currently working on the, the GTA 04 kernel, we would need a little help for bugs and sound, power management, and this SDIO Wi Fi thing. So, if somebody with expertise in that wants to jump in and, and focus on these things, I think it would help all the GTA 04 users. So, now how upstreaming works. The process of getting what we have developed and tested here into the Linux tree, that is what Marek will tell us now. Thanks, I'm Mark. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to prepare a Linux patches for upstream. Maybe at the beginning, uh, question anybody of you sending patches to Kernel? No? no. So maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe after the talk, we have more volunteers to send patches. And uh, what my talk will be about, and what topics we cover, some, some good basics. And the Linux coding style, a little bit uh, how to fix a file, how to generate a proper patch, how to test if it's correct, and how to mail a patch to some mailing list for review. Okay, so start with Git. Git is a, maybe you know, it's a version control system similar to SVN or CDS or something. It's kernel sources are using uh, Git for, uh, for, for better control. So maybe I'll show you a little bit. Uh, so first command you need to run, you need to clone the tree. So git clone, this is a git address. This is, for example, our gt4 kernel, git where all our work is, is done. So I already have cloned the tree. So git kernel tree, we can, some basic commands we can check. Git lock. So it gives us a which commits from my branch are done. So you see my, my name. So it's a first is a commit message, it's some hash tag and also when it was some small description and sign up. We can also check what was in that specific commit, for example. We copy that and git show this so you can see the patch some change lines is what was removed plus what was added so I just edit enable here so this is a this is a patch not a or commit okay so if you if you have a tree cloned then yes. small talk about about coding style, kernel coding style. The maintainers are very strict about coding style, so every patch which is submitted must follow this coding style rule. Uh, there is a various various things which must be followed. So, for example, documentation, coding style. Oops.
You must follow. So I will show just small of that maybe. The general rules rule is that you must use tabs for for kernel code. All tabs must have eight characters, and there is an eight, eighteen character limit, which comes from some old history because all terminals have just one hundred characters in line, so still limited to eighty. 80 the punch card was only eighty characters. Sorry, the punch card is only eighty. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the real limit. It's a history. <laughs> Historical. <Yeah. coughs> okay, so for example, if you have a block and you have a two two lines in this block, they must be in this curly braces. Also else has more lines like one. There is also go to use block in links kernel to avoid some problems with the with the, with the memory leaks on these things. And for example, if you if you look to that code, so if you have only one line in it block and else you don't need this code right? This is for example what we will try to fix or we we will try to look with the, this tool check edge which will ch check the page will try to find some problems in the in some coding kernel and we try to fix it and, and create from that place. It will be a small example. So we will try to run the script check. Sorry. Check page. Minus that is check file. Minus minus first and we choose some some driver good candidates. Drive the staging directory. This script will, will check the source in that file and print you the errors, coding style errors. And my computer is a little bit slow. Okay, so you'll see here a lot of warnings. Warning line over. Anything great is what I was talking about. And other mornings. So we can we can for example yeah, for example warning braces are not necessary in in this statement, so we can open the file. On the line. Yeah, so here you see these these braces are not necessary. Breaks coding style for this kind. So we will create a patch, simple patch that we remove them. Also it else. We save it, you can run again the script check page. Okay, and this line should be already fixed, so the line is 2,950. So this line is not yet here, so we fix something, which is in base things. We can we can check the change with git build. Oops. This is a wrong thing here, but basically what we did we just uh, remove remove this curly braces around where it was so this, we, if we have this fixed, we call 
this thing at the edge a lot. Okay. You want to sit here? You There's can see the screen. Yeah, but I guess you can't see it on your screen. Check page. This is a. It's not that page. You just take it right. But like the example, how it should be right. That we have to make sure. So I will see it in common line. So we did git diff. Then we continue with git commit. Commit means that we commit that word to to, to tree. So git commit minus s means it will add automatically signed offline, which I showed. The minus a means all the changes. Side of fixed edit automatically because of minus s parameter. We are working on five drive staging this file. We add some some commands that um, staging ft one thousand ft one thousand fix coding style style issue and some calling <laughs> message fixing. Coding basis, coding style So this is committed to our git tree if we want to block. So top commit is is that fix will be valid here with a with the comment in which which uh, kernel party will done small documentation or comment message and sign off. Then you can show we already do that. <coughs> it's a good thing before before uh, posting it, we give email to check if this patch compiles. So first compile the module. I can try that. Drivers. It's okay. Okay, this this page is compiling, so it's correct. So you can use git format patch. So git format patch takes some set of patches or only one patch and creates text file or patch file. So git format patch minus n minus one minus o is output directory and put it to my best. Okay, so my this patch staging and the patch we can open it. This patch one. So our patch is here. So you see the subject 
you see the reason here. It's from, from me. That he was at 600 million and the rest were seen. And we can, before also submitting, first check if it's compiled, and you can use script. Okay, check page. Check page. Check page. My best page. Okay, so we have no errors, no warnings. So we can. We can submit it. Then exists another script, get maintainer, which will tell you to which addresses holds this patch. Function. So we see here, basically the patches are sent to maintainers. <coughs> so the rest of the hard money is a staging subsystem maintainer. This is some, 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 uh, some guys who generate some patches. So we don't need to send to them guys. But we also CC the mailing list. We don't use this. So for sending uh, proper patches, or patch which is sent to mailing list must be included in value. Of email, it's gonna be like a, like an attachment or something. It will not be accepted. So for for that type of thing, we will use Git send email send email. We will add minus minus two, so it will be correct. And then minus minus c minus minus cc to this mailing list. Mm. This mailing list. How did you get an odd fixer? Sorry? Your name isn't there, and your title is odd fixer. Yeah, because I uh, I I push this this patch I push this code to the to the to the kernel to the staging. This FD one thousand is some flying on USB device. I found some sources, we will be clean it up and post it to the staging, so that's the reason why I'm the odd fixer. I'm the why not. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> the original of was was the email with number zero, so you number one. <laughs> okay, so it's an email to CC all, all things and then the patch. Then we will ask you okay, so this is body. So this is the list from it's from me. Send to who CC subject blah 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 that I all that I tell my my, my passwords to my SMTP and we will send this patch. I, I will not show you this, but I can show you probably maybe send only to my address. For that thing, uh, it's good if you set up. For example, I'm using SMTP from Gmail. So here, if you add to git config, to mobile config, send email, you set just smtp gmail.com, my email address, you can put also password here. Right? So then you will, for sending patches, use my smtp from, from gmail. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so checklist again. So, kernel builds, we must have correct files. So we have correct subject, explain patch in the sidebar. This is mandatory for the patches. Some advanced patches. This was a simple patch, for example, if you like to make series like patch, you see some, sometimes maybe patch one, three, one, two, three, three, three. So, if you make one series, you will, you will, do, you will use git form patch. So for example, from this, these three patches, I would like to make search because they are rated. This is a work for OPA362, which, which includes many many of the folks. So these three patches, I would like to make a series. So I will start. Uh, Thank 
for search and for which commit ID to this commit. So we generate the H1 to free. Subject. What? No. Sorry. And this side is going here. So it is one slash three, second one is second slash three, third one is next slash three. Uh, usually, it's good good thing if you implement something and send some service, it's good to add. Uh, Cover letter where you describe what you fix, what you what you change, and those things. So we can exhibit that minus minus cover cover letter. So it will generate a zero 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 cover letter, which then can be edited when you send the send the patches. So you have it, choose git, send email, minus 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 on the Second best patches. So you can edit here subject, describe, adding an old way, things, some COVID message. Here, here is a what was changed, what was added. So you edit that and send with that cover letter. Uh, If you get some replies from maintainers, they, they don't like something in your patches or something is wrong and you must rework. Normally you send patch version 2. Also git format patch can do it for you. If you fix fix that, so git format patch. Let's go to add minus minus uh, subject prefix patch v2. If we open again, for example, this patch, so we have here patch into all three and I'm creating you know, in all files. Yeah. So that's all. Do I said any questions? Uh, <coughs> when you give a list of maintainers, uh, how do you know which title uh, you have? How do you know who, which person is the person to send to? I mean, there are some titles, but they don't tell me anything. When I'm not sending the other There should be. Here is the name, name, email address, and uh, and the uh, command. So for example, break rule. Basically, maybe maybe this is not correct example for staging, but Greg Greg is a maintainer of staging subsystem. So basically, you send it to maintainer <coughs> and and CC the mailing list. Okay, so that, that's enough. Here, the supporter and uh, there was a uh, noun <coughs> that was offered. Uh, what does that mean? Yeah, so it does mean that he that he sent some patch to to that to that subsystem too. So it's still different than comments, huh? Yeah. Does that explain somewhere in in detail? It's 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 described in documentation is submitting patches. So that, so, um, I think patches. It should be described somewhere here. But but it's enough really to send it to maintainer and CC mailing list. It's for maintainer it's it's really necessary to get the patch if we like to get comments. Thanks. It's a little bit messy, but okay. It's enough to send. I think the difference between author and committer is that one person can be the author of the software, and another one is the one who pushes it. Or commit to yeah. Yeah, something. Like that. Makes a commit. Maybe. 
one one more thing. Nicholas tells a lot about divide tree. Maybe I'll show you a small example how it looks like. DTS, so it's in arg arg DTS, and for example, for us, for our GTA. So this is a format of the ice tree. So it's some semi description format for you can you can describe CPU, what is supply for CPU and other things. And this, this format is then compiled to some binary format, which is then included to the kernel and kernel can can encode it, parse it and start your drivers. So this is device 3 It's some text format for describing your board. So the idea behind device 3 is that you have one kernel, and you can, as, as Nicholas mentioned, you can run one kernel with different on different boards with different devices. So you just dis describe your devices, compile it to the kernel and to the or like modules, and with this description you can have one kernel running on GTA 4, same kernel running on Neo 900, and, and on Kira, whatever. Okay, so that's another. Mm. Other questions? Mm. Also to Michael? But, uh, okay, you have often the, you have the situation that you need uh, some patch to really, which is not upstream and probably will not be that easily upstream and want to test uh, and have another patch which you want to test upstream but uh, which you cannot uh, test uh, on its own fully. So, uh, what's the minimal testing you do in that, uh, this case? Uh, just uh, be able to compile it. For example, we uh, do not have the device free upstream. I would, I would say that if you have device, you can test your your chain on a real device. If if you don't have device, you can just compile it. Um, yeah, but, but, but if, if you just compile it, you must have a better argumentation uh, if they want to discuss uh, if it really works. Uh, and look, I, I think you also asked, what do you, for example, you add a driver and a device tree on, on your device to test it on your device. But you, at that moment, you just want to submit one part of that. that yes, uh, yeah. the driver, for example, they yeah. uh, don't have, have the. Uh, we don't have all the, the device we uh, mm -hmm. uh, think uh, for, uh, for mm -hmm. the upstream yeah. and uh, but the driver which is of general use uh, somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. we did have a, such a situation recently. So basically, on, on your device you have it working everything, but you can't submit your device to change. For that, for example, because that device tree itself or the device is not known and accepted. In that situation, uh, it is sufficient to submit the driver and the, um, the description, the bindings description. I will go into details on this tomorrow on the device tree workshop. So that uh, maintainer, he re only reads the emails, he has no device to test. So he reads the emails, and from these emails, he must be convinced that this can work. And then he does not look at your device tree file, which you can't upstream yet, but he looks at the description of what should be in the device tree. Okay, well, like a practical example. Mm -hmm. For example, I have that uh, uh, thunderstorm bound now. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's uh, attached to my uh, hardware at the bike, and uh, it is, I would write an I square C kernel mm -hmm. driver for it. Yep. Then it, it depends on some uh, uh, several uh, bike specific uh, mm -hmm. stuff. If I want to test it, but uh, if it's included in, it would be included in some other hardware, it won't be. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, it would ma make more sense uh, to, but it would make uh, sense to first uh, get uh, the driver for the uh, thunderstorm detector uh, mm -hmm. upstreamed. Uh, but then I would not uh, be able. Uh, it would not work on the uh, 
uh, Cannabis uh, non upstreamed uh, patches, but it would compile. Yeah. The, the minimum requirement is that it compiles, that they accept it. With the maintainers, they cannot test all drivers themselves. They must rely a little on, on in your expertise and that you say you have tested it. I hope that it almost answers your question. Uh, what I also wanted to mention in that relation is we tried to upstream the full device tree as we have it, which would be the worst situation. We have entries in the device tree for which we do not have a driver. And that was clearly rejected. So they only accept device tree entries for existing drivers. But there's no general policy. I asked if they have a policy, and then the answer was, well, just submit it, and we will tell you if, if it can be accepted. <laughs> That's the policy. So my recommendation would be just to prepare the patch, submit it, and then you will get the feedback. They will exactly tell you, oh, this line, I do not understand. Here you can improve the code. And oh, where is the uh, bindings description? And from that feedback, you get what, what must be done in this specific case. So in my experience, it is difficult to find a general rule before submitting this. Well, of course, you should care, take care of the things Marek mentioned, formatting and, and, and the rules of how, how the mail should be and so on. Otherwise, you will get a very negative feedback. <laughs> but, but the specific driver code, that's what you discuss. Another thing could be if you do not submit it immediately upstream, but to the GTA or 4 kernel, we can integrate it in a way that it works and then help with the upstreaming. So that's just an intermediate stage. Yes, uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, I have the device uh, here in some boards. Uh, if mm -hmm. some uh, some uh, unsoldered boards, so... Uh, so others can help test it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's something I think we have a session on showing yes. the hardware this afternoon. So other questions to Carl and upstream? We have an estimate how many hours you already put into this topic, into this upstreaming. Hmm. 9 to 12 weeks with cooling coffee breaks. <laughs> <laughs> it is so. difficult to say. Sometimes it's one hour for a proper patch. And overall, for the support of these uh, systems, mm -hmm. it's, well, it's, it's difficult to estimate because so many people have contributed. And I think nobody knows how much they did. Everybody mm -hmm. only knows how much he was making. Do you want to know it? No. <laughs> my, my personal experience is that Fixing a bug, you know there is a bug, and fixing that so that it is really fixed and you understand what was wrong and so on, typically can take two full working days. Because you have to learn what, how the subsystem works, you have to enable debugging, the standard debugging is not enough, and then you have to add print K statements and find out how the information flow is going through these drivers you have not written yourself. And this is the most time consuming thing. Then, for example, the uh, touchscreen driver, uh, it, the, originally in the older cars, we did have it as a separate driver, different driver name. So I uh, just took it and pulled out the parts that I wanted to have in the official driver. That was about one hour to, to make this copy and paste and reintegrate and rename some things and make it to tidy it up so that it compiles, then tests that it works, some, then you get some idea, oh, if you do it that way, it is even simpler than ever, ever it was before. That's another hour, and then, then you format these patches and, and send them half an hour. So it could be two hours, three hours to, to, to get a patch, and then in this case, uh, the, the maintainer said, okay, looks good, any comments? Then after a week there were no comments, then he just said, okay, he's applying it, and in, in 3.19 it will just be merged. So it's no additional work. Okay. 
you can get comments from maintainer, then it's harder for you because you must argue. This is a correct way, it tells you no, this is not correct mm -hmm. way. And yeah. we have experience with Wi Fi things mm -hmm. that yeah. was rejected because and they cannot they cannot uh, mm -hmm. negotiate how it should look like in general. So. Yeah. The worst situation that can happen is that you have your system working, you have thought a lot of things about that, then you submit it, and the feedback is Oh, others have already discussed that. Please read what there was in the last few years as emails, how they wanted to solve it. <laughs> then, then you have to find out what he, he, mentioned, he means, which emails he's referring to, and then you have to think about that. And, and this thinking about completely different solutions, understanding, that's, that can be time consuming. Not making a solution for a new device. And it's, it, it, it might look like a really tough thing, but on the other hand, if I were a maintainer, it's the best thing he can do. He's doing his job right. There are suites for software tests around. And beautiful maintainers accept code with testing instructions. Mm, I think they appreciate it, but it's, it's not very common. And they just check the code if, yeah. if, if it's okay. If it's okay. And they might they make a code review. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, some patches can have a tested by mm -hmm. signature as well. If one person has written the code and another one has said, okay, I've tried it on my device and it, it really works, then there's a tested by. What also can happen if you have a very simple bug and you can't explain the bug to the maintainer. You, so that he says, okay, that's a one line change. Then he, sometimes he writes the patch, sends it to you, and asks that you test it. Okay. Other questions? Okay, thank you for your patience.